So let's cut this into a few sections here. Um, we're going to start part one off with more of the budget items. I went out with my girlfriend to Ross and we stopped there usually uh, to see if there's any like jackets. I found North Face jackets there, believe it or not, in the past. And I also find like SOG backpacks. There's plenty of them there usually. Um, I have them. They're stored away right now. Those will be probably brought out later when I do, you know, bug out bag scenarios and things like that. I've got some things coming in the channel. Gears are turning in my head. I've got ideas and I want to make those ideas happen. So, um, back to knives. I do collect high end knives on my channel. Um, but recently, you know, if it's there and it's hanging on the shelf, uh, I just get to the point where I'll just say, hey, I'll, I'll test it out on the channel and I'll review it. So, we've got these budget um, avalanche. Even, they call this a camping knife. Price here, you can see it, $7.99. I mean, $14 is the average price. Is it worth that? Probably not, but you know, for testing purposes, that's fine. Again, another budget item. Comes with a rope. It's not paracord, it's nylon. Full stainless steel body, so this won't rust easily. And it uh, looks like it's got a drop tip to it. I've got two of these that I picked up. I've got one with the glow in the dark handle and or the, the nylon rope and it actually does glow not the brightest but it's uh, cordage so got two of these knives his and hers and uh, four inch blade length and it comes with a kind of a shoddy little sheath here just your basic nylon sheath nothing flashy so budget items I'll go ahead and uh, keep going through what I have here open them up and then just kind of show you guys well, the next one is by Guardian uh, Stainless steel blade, tactical handle, lanyard slot, and sheath included. This is their 3 inch fixed blade. With the color on it, it's pretty cool. It's got like this neon green. I have a folder. This is actually a second one because the first one, I uh, damaged it in the process of trying to fix it. Because if you guys can see, it's very hard with the thumb studs to even deploy this. I mean, I'm literally struggling to open this. In the process, I'm bending the clip. So it's it's a budget knife. It's not anything spectacular, um, but it is G10 handle scale, so that is a plus. As you guys can see, I've used this one a lot at work. It's just my backup, and it's got this cool. Um, I forget what these are called. They're like push pin locks, but if I can depress this, you guys can see it moves up, and that will allow you to close the blade. So you have to press it, and then that will lock in so just for a folder budget folder guardian same company nothing fancy it's just got the g10 a nice neon green backspacer so aesthetically it looks pretty cool it's a tiny tiny knife alright so back to the guardian fixed blade same concept budget knife fixed blade so I prefer to carry this one at work so I think that would work out fine and uh, we'll keep moving on we got a couple more items here and we're moving up from budget to mid-range alright so getting back into pocket knives as you'll see here we've got a Gerber also I Ross this was $9.99 this is the paraframe too I have no idea what the paraframe one is if they even have that but yeah, so this looks like it's a frame lock. I'll take it out of the package and show you guys in a minute. But uh, another find at Ross. So it's not just a clothing store. If you guys have a Ross around you, sometimes you can find stuff like this. But uh, if you guys are serious, I'm not even joking either. This is a Leatherman. They had this at Ross. This was $31.99, comparable to $40. Uh, Walmart, you could probably find these too. But again, this is a Ross right there, so we got the Wingman. And I have a uh, Leatherman OHT, so I'll probably be using this one every day as a pocket clip. No sheath. So, assuming that's why they have the pocket clip on it. But yeah, so another item from Ross, and uh, pretty cool to find a uh, Leatherman there. Alright, so now that we're moving stuff out of the way, um, we'll keep going on with uh, more budget companies. But uh, with some pretty neat products now. So this is Avalanche, the company... 
that makes these knives. Okay, avalanche. Right here we've got a nylon hammock. Price on this one, can't read it backwards, 20 bucks. Seems pretty affordable. Um, 100% nylon, it's 500 pound weight rating and it's 9 foot by 5.25 so single person I don't think that would be a double but you know it seems pretty lightweight it does come with carabiners in it and uh, you're ready to go so this would be good for the park uh, for just kicking back alright guys so I just opened up the uh, wingman here Leatherman first thing I went to was the knife because obviously I like knives and that's the first thing I'm going to check out on this multi-tool because it's, you know, the knife. So, this is now my new favorite multi-tool. I actually have to check my OHT and see if it's the same, but I think I have a fixed... No, it's a straight edge. It's not serrated. This one is serrated. But this is cool. Now, I'm right-handed. And just to give you guys an example here, it's serrated, right? But do you guys notice something? I'm right-handed, okay? Check this out. So I'm going to hold these knives up exactly the same. Let's just use the Elite Tactical folder here. Okay, you guys can see that right there are the serrations and where the grooves are cut into it. Okay? Backside here, right-handed again. I'm holding in my right hand. Okay, you'll see that that's flat there. Check this out. See the serration side? Now if I were to hold this knife backwards, now the serrations are ground on the same side. Again, right-handed. So, that's a budget knife, right? The knockoff of the zero tolerance. Well, let's go into a bench made now. Serration's got to be on the right side. Not knocking bench made on this. This is just me because I'm right handed and the side of the serrations. There's the bench made Osborne. It's the uh, barrage. There's the flat side. Serrations, you can really see those nicely. Again, there's the grind side. Here's the flat side. Right handed, same direction. See the difference, guys? So, what that means, at least to me, is that now if this, the, the barrage here, if I'm carving into wood for feather sticks, I'm fighting that angle on the serrations. Since this is ground on the right side, it's going to line up much better. It's going to lay flat on the wood, and that edge is going to curl much nicer versus having it on this side and you're fighting that edge it's kind of hard to see with the shadow so that's what you're cutting into I don't have any wood with me it's outside but you guys get the point I've talked too long about the serrated side but this is exciting to me because that way I can carve right handed and the feather sticks are going to be even better with serrations and I'm not a big fan of serrations but this is cool. So this mystery steel Gerber is, I believe, all stainless steel. And yeah, stainless steel handle and blade. So very, very light, surprisingly. So there's the Gerber. And what is the blade length on this sucker? This is a overall 8.1 inches. So close lengths 4.7. Doesn't say the blade cutting, but it looks to be about three and a half, maybe four inches. Again, frame lock design. Very basic. Very lightweight. So let's move on to the avalanche knife. Pretty cool. This one's got a nice clip point. A little drop. 
Again, a hollow, hollow grind. Fairly sharp. Hate the handle already, the cord, that nylon cord. I'm going to exchange that and put a paracord on it. A little bit of jimp in on the top. Extremely uncomfortable choil. I mean, that's sharp as crap. But um, I'm going to do this right handed since I'm right handed. I got medium to large size hands. Yeah. It's a very, very lightweight stainless steel knife. I wouldn't depend your life on that, but it does say China. And it does say Avalanche. This would just be f for fun. A little bit of a useless paracord dangler thing here, so I don't know. Might make a good throwing knife too. But uh, we're going to baton this one. We'll test it out. See if it can survive. Okay, so I just pulled that sheath out. Amazing quality. I mean, absolutely just stunning. This is junk. I'd say the knife is too, but you know, I'm just going to have fun testing it. Just for uh, craps and giggles. But let's check out this Guardian, because I actually had this before, and I thought it was pretty decent. So let's cut this one open. The sheath sucks on this. Most sheaths do. And here is this super awesome just miniature sheath. This one at least has some like plastic in it. It's a much better quality than the last piece of crap. But snap closure. So it's got to be worth something with the snap. Let's get to the knife. That, that's just convenient. Ouch. Plastic is sharp too. Alright. So, full tang, green liner scales, we've got some kind of accents here on the screw, and again, another hollow grind, follows a nice curve here for some paracord, two slots if you want, so you can put some bead swag on there, paracord, and uh, yeah. I think that might be kind of cool for work. It does have a sharp 90, I remember that, so. And uh, the edge on it. You guys can tell I haven't been making videos in a long time. I'm kind of getting back up to speed here, but yeah. I think it's G10 handles, if I double check. Mystery. Might be Gravery handles, I don't know. Doesn't feel like G10 from the original. Uh, the pocket knife. Yeah, completely different. So this is G10. I know that for a fact. That's kind of hard to tell. But I need a new battery and I will be back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to wrap this up and we'll open up part two. And I've got two unboxings to do for two good, good channels here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, let's do it.